emails. I get the same questions over and over about the belt. Well, have you thought about doing a video going over frequently asked questions regarding your belt? To understand how to set up the Voitech belt that we created, we got to break down a few things first. So one of them is going to be the belt itself. We need to go over the buckles, the hole patterns, the molly, the weight, the sizing, blah, 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 all that stuff. Once we're done with that, then we're going to go ahead and get into our mounting, mounting options. One of them is going to be how we attach our holsters with the different holster hanger options from True North Concepts to the Safariland style and others. Then we'll go ahead and get into how we actually mount the magazine pouches and any kind of accessories on the belt itself using our hole pattern and the molly. So to do that, we'll cover Safariland's ELS system. We'll cover the Blade Tech 360 system. Then we'll go ahead and use Kydex pouches. We're gonna use tier one concealed for that and show you how you mount them directly on with your screws and bolts and all that stuff. Then we'll cover molly and Velcro. And then we'll also mention a couple at the end. By the time this video is over, you should clearly understand how to mount any of your pouches, how the belt works, the sizing, the features of the belt, holsters, all that stuff. And that way I don't have to answer so many emails when the questions, the answers to those questions are clearly on the website right in front of you. Breaking down the belt. So first off, the belt comes in four colors. You got multi-cam like we have here. You got coyote tan or coyote brown, whatever you want to call it. You got ranger green and we also have black. Now, one of the biggest things we get is the sizing on this. Okay, so if you guys, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it up here on the screen, right here off to my right, it should probably be like your left or something, but that's our size chart. We've also got it down in the link, but if you go to the main page where the belt is at, the belt shop page, it's gonna clearly state all that down there, the ranges for the different belts. So one thing for you, I'm about, my waist when I measure with like a soft measuring tape is about 35 and a half inches, maybe 36 inches, something like that, depending on you know how much Chick-fil-A and sweet tea and cookies I've been eating and all that stuff. But I'm kind of right in between sizes of a medium and a large. So this is what I'll tell you. If you're in between sizes and you like your belt a little bit looser and you don't like cinching it down as tight as you can, go the size up. And if you think you're going to be wearing winter clothes and all that stuff, you know, stuff later, go the size up. If you like to cinch your belt down as tight as you can and, you know, cut off circulation to your legs, then go the size down. Best advice I can give you. But so that's our sizing, right? So. Check that out. Again, I'm a 35 and a half, 36. I'm right on the top end of medium, low end of a large. I can wear both belts. Now, the other part of that is, is how many molly slots does the belt have? So if you look here, if you get into the belt, you'll see that our molly isn't on the outside of the belt, like the little pal strips or whatever they're called, like a lot of others. We put it in between. So if you look here, there's little slots right there in between that's slotted out along the belt and your molly goes between it so it does not eat up or take up any of your hook material to attach to your inner belt and you can see on this that's pretty much how it attaches right there with this little fast mag and little malice style clips that go down below but any of them work okay so with that again every size has a different amount of molly slots and with our handy dandy sheet here you know, extra small has 20, going up to the 3XL has 32. So for reference, your medium has 24 and your large belt has 26 molly slots. So that should make it easier. You got plenty of room to put whatever you want on the belt. And just a little side note too, a lot of people will offset the buckle to the right or to the gun side, kind of like we did here, to free up some of that space in front to be able to attach things if that's what you like to do. So sizing, generally, that's what you're looking at again measure with a soft tape, wrap it around through right where the belt's going to sit through your pant loop. That is your waist. Okay. And that is how you determine your size. Other than that, we got the weight of this is about 9.4 ounces. Okay. Most belts on the market weigh 19 ounces or more. So it's substantially lighter. The buckle itself is a Raptor buckle. So everything here is made in America, including the Raptor buckles are also USA sourced. So we use the Raptor buckles, very similar to the Cobra buckle. We just like Raptor. Obviously opens up just like that. And then the question, the other question we get most, probably second most, is how do I secure the buckle down? Well, you guys will notice this is your strap keeper on the end. You adjust the length 
of the buckle on the strap. And then you take this, goes through that little hole just like that. And then all you do is S roll it up like this, lay it flat, wrap it around, and you're good to go. And that will make sure your belt does not loosen up. So if you're wondering what that's for, that's what it's for. Just like it comes from, we ship it to you. That's what it's for. So everything's laser cut, and then there's a Tegris liner on the inside. So the belt is made out of Tegris and then wrapped with the nylons and all that stuff. All right, last thing to kind of get to on here, on this belt is gonna be the hole pattern. So the reason we created the belt is we wanted a belt that we could, a little bit sturdier than a lot of the stuff on the market, that's somewhere between that tactical belt and that competition belt, right? And I think that hole pattern system that a lot of people are using was really, really cool. But you couldn't use Molly and the hole pattern. So we made up our own hole pattern that gets you a little bit more adjustment, and we'll show you on the different mounting options here later. But this should get you a little bit more adjustment than, say, the standard hole patterns that come on some of the stuff you've seen with Safari Land and other things. You get a little bit more here. So this will fit a majority of everything out there. Honestly, I haven't found anything yet that it doesn't fit. But... I'm sure there's something. That's the whole pattern. That's why we designed it. Patent pending. Yep, all that stuff. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And then lastly, we pretty much just need to cover our inner belt. So the inner belt is not sold separately. When you buy the belt, you get the outer and the inner. So the inner belt has an outer protective liner integris, and then it has memory foam style material, something along those lines that's lined on the inside. So the reason we did that is because a lot of these belts are painful to wear. We want it to be more comfortable and having that little bit of foam in there and that little bit of memory style foam will take some of that pressure off your hips. And if you guys notice, you're like, oh, my sciatica hurts. Well, this should help out with that, right? We're not putting, we're not impinging the hips and those nerves and everything else as much. It should be a little bit more comfortable for you. I think it's more comfortable. A lot of people think it's more comfortable, but I guess you have to try it out to find out. Other than that, that is our belt breakdown. That is the majority of the features. Obviously, you see how that works. And we'll break it down more in depth here in a minute. But you've got a good amount of adjustment, probably five to six inches, something like that. About four inches per belt size you get in adjustment. Now it's time for our holster hangers. So Holster hanger is just a common way to say how we attach the holster to the belt, right? Some are more hanger style. Some are more like your UBLs, right? That Safari Land makes. And then Blade Tech makes also. We've also got our True North here, the metal one, which is a really good option. And then we have Direct Mount with the Safari Land's QLS. So first, let's go ahead and break this one down. So this is the one from RDR Gear. I'm sorry, Jeff, I can't remember the name. It's like the M MH1, I don't know, but it's great. It's basically the, the Safari Lens UBL. And all he did was he had a little belt keeper right here to wedge that up some so he doesn't take some of the play out of it. And then he gives you some adjustment and how you can cant the actual QLS, right? So this slides on super easy. All you do is just take off the actual buckle right here, take that off, slide it on, put the buckle back on. Simple as that. So these obviously fit pretty well on there. So there's one option. You use Safari Lens UBLs and then the RDR Gear 1 too. We've been using that for a while. I like it a lot. All right. Next is going to be our Blade Tech. So this is something, at least it's new to me. I don't know. From Blade Tech, this is their new holster hanger option right here. Great system. Works with their Tech Lock Minis or 360s here. And then the cool thing about it is... On the inside, it has this adjuster and I have it pushed all the way down for two inches. So that wedges the belt up so you don't get that play up and down in your holster hanger. This actually keeps that nice and tight. It's also got one for 1.75 and 1.5. So you can adjust that in there. And obviously they got their canning stuff. They have adapters for Safari Land. They even got little leg strap holes. You can put that through if you want also. This one's really cool. I'm excited to start using it. Uh, but yep, it fits too. Then next is the True North Concepts. And this has been a great product coming out. Um, a lot more people are getting this because it gives you so many options to change the cant of your Safari Lane QLS and then also other mounting things too. I don't know what they are. Check out their website, True North Concepts, but I always just put the um, Safari Lane QLS on here. The good thing about it too, because it's that rigid metal and because of how it attaches to your belts, you don't get that where the holster flicks up and out 
when you go to draw, it keeps it straight down a lot better. So the only thing I'll tell you about this is the, when you mount it, it comes with these rubber spacers at the top. Because we're a two inch belt, these bars, the attachment bars go through the molly, plate goes on top, your mounting plate. And then when you do that, you can only use the rubber spacers on either the top or the bottom. I just put mine on top because it's just too tight, it won't fit. You can see on the bottom, we don't have it right there and on the top we do. But if you do that, then you're fine. You don't have to cut anything, it goes right on and that's how I've been using mine. Just don't forget or remember, use your Loctite. Cool, so that's that one. I like this one a lot. I think a lot of people do, it's a great option. They make a great product. And then lastly, we put this on here just to show you. This is just a Safari Land QLS mounting plate right onto the belt. It just takes two screws, fits in like that. You can adjust it however you want. You can can it and find different holes, but this will also mount directly onto the belt if you like doing that. So you got options. Biggest thing with this was options. You, you should be able to have one belt, switch stuff out, use whatever you, you want to use, and you shouldn't be limited by, you like, oh, I bought this, now I have to go buy this other crap. Well, we didn't want that. Cool. So that's our, uh, our four different holster hangers right there. So obviously you got your UBL, Safari Land UBL, uh, and the RDR gear one, which is really great. Just a good dude up at RDR gear. He made that. Uh, the Blade Tech one, which is super cool. Uh, great design. You gotta start using that. And then the True North Concepts, tried and true. A lot of people love it. And then you can also just mount up your uh, Safari Land QLS plate. So the Safari Land ELS system is originally why we created the belt. I thought these are great. They've been around for a long time, yet nobody's kind of merged, you know, this kind of stuff on what could be considered like a duty belt or professional belt or a tactical belt, or whatever you want to call it, right? Um, some you can also wear with Molly and have an actual belt buckle on it. So these are great because if you look, you just mount the receiver on the belt, if you've never seen these before, and you mount the fork on your mag carrier or whatever piece of equipment you have. Then these just slide in there, like so. And you just little forks, you just pop them right back out, and you can take stuff on and off. So looking at the adjustment on this, where this works, you take your screws, you put them right in here, right? These little Safari Lin ones so they don't turn and twist which I thought was super smart with the way they got these cut out. Boom, there it goes. So when you screw stuff in, you don't have to hold the back of these. The clip or the uh, receiver plate actually keeps the screws from twisting on you. So most of your adjustment on our belt is just gonna be with these two right there, okay? Now, if you wanna go completely horizontal with anything you attach like this, then you're gonna have to use these inner holes here and just line those up just like you want, put them over the holes, and now your, your actual plate will be horizontal. But if you don't, what you get is if I use these two, now I can start adjusting it from horizontal. I can can it here, can can it about like that, and then go straight up and down. So using that, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it, and we're gonna put this on. I'm gonna attach one of them. Right there. So if I take that and twist it, one, I can keep it straight up and down, just like that. I can rotate it next to that bottom hole right there, and I get that angle. Rotate it again to that third slot below, and now it gives me a steeper angle. And then obviously if I just use the inner two, I can go horizontal. So that's your four levels of adjustment with the Safari Land. Again, they're nice, they work really well. Uh, they've been around for a while. Screws are easy to use, clip on, clip off, take your stuff, however you wanna do it. And as you can see here, we kind of staggered them out so you can see it, but yeah, Safari Lin uh, ELS system is a really good product to use. It's been around for a while. So that will definitely fit the belt using the screws. Again, you're not gonna use all the holes on the receiver plate. You're really just gonna use two. Cool. Fairly recently, Blade Tech just released their tech mount, right? I hadn't heard of it until like a month ago. Honestly, until we, yeah, a month ago, one of the customers was like, does it fit Blade Tech? I'm like, what are you talking about? But they released their tech mount system. So the tech mount system has two sizes, the regular size, and then you have the minis. So the regular size is, seems like it's more meant to be like for your gun on the, uh, the holster hanger. However, you can also mount it directly to the belt. 
This one is super simple. There's not a whole lot to explain on it other than you just put it on and put the screws in, right? So, but it does fit. But I'll give you a quick, I'll show you how it works real quick. So first let's look at this one. So below you have these, this little lever that goes forward or back, which is lock, and then in the middle to press the paddle, then you take out your actual holster and the receiver plate, or excuse me, uh, the mail end, right? I don't know what you call that. So mounting plate. So your receiver right here is just a big disc receiver. And then you see all these little notches. Once you put it in, you can decide how much cant or adjustment you want out of it. And then it just locks in place. So it kind of negates the purpose for twisting and canting and everything else. You can decide how much you want and change it easily on the fly. So that's how that works. Now getting into it, here's how it goes on the belt. Two screws right in the back. One, two. For this, use the short screws. When you order it, it will come with three different sizes, like a short, medium, and long. For the size of our belt, how thin it is, you just need the short ones. So taking that off so you can see, two screws go right there. Two screws attach right there. It's obviously got more, but for this, you really don't need it. Just the two works fine. And then once you put it in, all right, you depress the paddle at the bottom. Now you can twist this however you want and decide what angle of cant you want on that. So just so you know, yes, can the larger tech mount attach to the belt? Yep, and we put the rifle mag on here just to show you that. But yes, that will fit on there just fine. And then that goes right back there and clips down. So what Blade Tech have been known for for a long time is these tech locks, right? So this is kind of the old system. These are really cool when they came out, right? But they've been around for a while. The problem is they slide around a lot of belts, especially the thinner ones like ours. So a lot of guys would just attach um, Velcro to the inside of it to keep it in place. The downside is it takes up your hook on the inside so you don't have that good solid attachment to the belt itself, which honestly, these new tech mount systems just kind of solve all that. Straightforward, that's what it is. It's a really cool system. I'm gonna start using these and just see how it goes, but I've heard great things from a lot of uh, military and law enforcement and you know good citizens that are patriots and, and run guns and gear. So anyway, that's our blade tech. So what do you do if you have Kydex pouches? Well, you can take your Kydex and you can attach it to any one of those things that we talked about before, right? Or you can actually mount them directly to the belt. So some people don't want to go out and spend money on the blade tech or the Safari Lander or whatever, right? And find some attachment system, that, that middle interface. They want to put it directly on the belt. You can totally do that. So anything that's cut with a hole pattern that'll work with Safari Lens ELS or any of those, you know, some of them got, got crazy hole patterns. They pretty much all work, right? So as long as it takes an attachment to it, then it'll go directly on the belt. So yeah, I'm sure the T-Rex arm zones will work. I've seen guys do that. The tier one conceal will work and a lot of the other brands out there. So let me show you how that works real quick. All right, so you can see here, we've got them staggered out. I'm gonna put one horizontal just to show you like that's, you know, from there to do that, it'll go straight up and everything in between. But again, all it is, two screws, okay? So you got your two screws there for each one. And obviously that's just with the holes we use. Now the tier one concealed is kind of unique in the, uh, the hole pattern that they put on the back of their mag carriers. So what they did, who doesn't love a good drill, right? I know the Milwaukee tool guys right now, they're like, Milwaukee's better. Like, no, they're not. All right. So they did was they made that kind of wheel thing. So if you use one hole in the middle, you're gonna get a ton of adjustment as you rotate that up. And these line up all the way around with the three different spots. You can also use other ones and get different angles too. So with this, you're gonna get even more angles. So just to kind of show you guys, one of them is gonna be right there. Then as I start to change the, the hole and rotate it, it just goes up and up and up and around. So you're gonna get about from here to here and about three different ones in between. So you've got about five angles of adjustment with this on the belt itself. But yeah, so we just do it, bolt it directly onto the belt and right onto your mag carrier. Again, 
probably best to use a little bit of Loctite. Okay. Sure. Uh, what kind of Loctite would you use, like blue or red? Ah, uh, you know how everybody says to use blue? They're like, use blue because then you can take it off. I just use red on everything because I want it there forever, right? So like every time I use blue Loctite, it, it comes off later. If I just use red, then I know that's not the right answer, but some people get really pissy about it. Like, you can never use red on this bullshit. I do it all the time. I use red on my, uh, yeah. my front sights. Yeah, same here. Yeah. Why? Because the blue comes off, man. So like the recommendation is blue, but it's kind of like a speed limit. Oh, 55, huh? I prefer 65, okay? So like, let's just, stronger is better. Like uh, Home Improvement, right? Tim the Toolman Taylor. Same concept, baby, right? So other than that, just use super glue. See how that goes. Don't do that, don't. Molly attachments. So this is about earlier, same thing. We talked about the True North Concepts hanger holster. Now we're gonna go over Molly and then just simple Velcro. So this is a medium belt. So with a medium belt, you have 24 slots all the way around. Every size you go up gets two more slots. Every size you go down gets two, two less slots. So a small would have 22 and a large would have 26, right? And so on and so forth. So look at that. Molly, again, the way we do the Molly is we do it through the inside of the belt, okay? So if you look how this is like this, I'm gonna do this for you guys. You can see how the Molly runs inside the belt so we do not take up the hook. Now these are malice clips. You can use Molly, um, the fabric Molly, right? You're probably just gonna have to get a screwdriver though, open this up, get on there and shove it down there, right? Cause we know it's a pain in the butt no matter what piece of equipment you have. These Molly malice clips are kind of nice. Some people love these, some people hate them. I think they're good, I like them a lot. But you can see it just slides right down in there, just like that, and goes through as you clip it and everything's good. So. That's pretty much it. That's Molly, it just goes right through. We don't have to weave or none of that. As you can see on some of these, the height of it, we wove it through, we push the pouch all the way down. Usually have an extra set right here, a little row, excuse me, a little row of Molly slots. So whatever that height is, then wrap it through that so you, doesn't, you don't get any movement up and down. That's what the different rows are for when you look at the pouches themselves. Same thing on the pistol pouches. These are Estac brand, the Kiwis from Estac, great company. They make probably some of the better ones of these that are out there. Another option is Velcro. Some pouches, and this is something also from Estac, which is like an angled mag pouch, right? But some people just use simple Velcro to secure the pouch itself which is fine and honestly it holds pretty well because you're Velcroing that down, then you're putting something out this on top of the other belt, which is just gonna secure this even more. That's fine, that works too, and that you can just put wherever you want. It doesn't have to go through any slots, you can just put it anywhere. Other than that, that is Molly, okay? I can't think of anything else to try and explain on this for Molly. Put it through the hole and clip it and like that's it, dude. You got 24 for a medium size and then it goes up and down from there two slots per size. Other mounting options. So there's a couple of mounting options out there that we didn't have with us. One is the Ridgeline Defense offset drop. Uh, we ordered it, but because there was some storms, it couldn't get here in time. It's probably, knowing our luck, it probably getting in today. You know what I mean? So we didn't have that, that available for the video, but we'll throw a picture of it on screen. That one works really well. Um, somebody sent me a picture and said, hey, this works too. I was like, oh, that's super cool. So check them out, Ridgeline Defense. Their thing works also. Um, another one too that the guy just texted me yesterday about was the axle node attachment thingies. So axle is AXL. So there's work too. Um, I just, I downloaded the video, sent me a video of it. We'll throw it up on screen as long as Tom's cool with that and show you, but that works for vertical and 45 is what he said. So you can see his attachment stuff too. Um, and then lastly, G-code, right? G-code works, I believe, another Molly attachment stuff does. Anything that it mimics Molly or fits to Molly will work on the belt. And I believe their direct bolt-on will also, but don't quote me on that. So that's the other attachment system. There's a lot of great stuff out there. So hopefully that anything you have will work. You can go on the belt. You don't have to buy any new shit. Cool. So modularity, right? Whatever. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it for all the different attachment systems. Uh, so uh, what are the most commonly asked questions about the belt? Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, one is, what size am I? I'm like, I, I don't know. You didn't tell me your size. You didn't literally send me a number, but there's a chart online. So one is what size. Two, does this attachment system work with it? 
Uh, three, why does my belt keep coming loose? What is this extra piece of Velcro on the strap keeper? I'm like, okay. And then returns. Can I return this or exchange it? Absolutely, man. As long as it looks like it's in new condition, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't look used, then we'll take it back, we'll exchange it, or we'll return your money. So absolutely you can do returns and exchanges. The directions are on the fax page of the website. Um, just follow that, do all that stuff, and we'll get you taken care of. If anything doesn't get taken care of or within an amount of time, just email us and ask. Like, we might have missed something. That's okay, but we'll get you squared away. No big deal. Um, yeah, those are kind of the most common ones. The size thing drives me nuts. Because we're like, what size am I? Dude, this one dude emailed us. And he goes, hey man, what size am I in black? And I was like, I don't know how to respond to that at the moment. That seems confusing. There was no waist number. There was no nothing. He just said in black. I was like, am I getting baited into something here? But he did that. Uh, didn't send us his size. So I guess he was taking up with the black belts. And I just responded, I don't know, man. I don't know what size you are. What size is your waist? And he was like, I'm a medium. I was like, well, that sounds like you're a medium. Like what, what do you want from me right now? Like I can't, I can't figure this out with the information you gave us. So we get some, get some awesome questions sometimes, uh, but I promise all the info is on the website. We're happy to answer them. That's a lie. I'm not happy to answer half of those damn questions, but we do it. So I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. How the pronunciation, Woj Tech, Woj Tech, mm -hmm. what, how, how, what's, is that right or? No, not at all. Okay. So, yeah. so how do you say it? So it's a boy tech, but okay. it, not, yeah, Woj Tech. That's what it looks like. It is. So That's what I've been saying. That's what most people say. So it's Wojtek, it's a Polish word. So like, I looked up famous bears, cause you know, bear solution. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, is there any cool bears out there? So Wojtek is this famous bear from World War II. They made documentaries about him. There's a statue in Scotland of all things, but he was a Polish bear. So the Polish military like adopted or bought this bear from like, I don't know, some carnies or some shit. But it was a Syrian brown bear. They made it an actual like, private and i think it retired as a corporal or something like that kind of like the marine corps with their dog yeah same thing so like they made it a actual member of the military because when they were leaving wherever and had to get on a british ship the brits were like nope only soldiers you can't bring mascots so they were like paperwork boop, gave them a foot locker and everything but like that bear is a private and they were like damn it we have to take your bear now so there's stories of this thing it used to carry ammunition like artillery ammunition to the front lines when they'd run out and like you'd see this bear like walking on two legs carrying ammo to like artillery positions. It used to eat cigarettes, drink beer, and has been credited with several Nazi kills. It like killed Nazis and ate them. And like you're like, oh, that's a lot. Well, this British sol soldier was like, nope, we were in a big battle and no shit. I saw this bear walking, carrying artillery shells on two legs. He's like, I thought I died. He's like, I thought it was dead. I thought it was in an alternate reality. He goes, I didn't know what was going on. He goes, I thought I was losing my mind. But no, man, famous bear. I was like, well, how do you, so drinks beer, eats cigarettes, kills Nazis. Like, how do we not name something after this bear? But yeah, it's been out some Wojtek. So there's a couple cool documentaries about him. Um, yeah, so statue in Scotland, pretty in Poland, pretty cool. So it started out, you're researching, you know, bear names. Yeah. Right, and it's a belt that is load bearing, it can carry things. Yeah. And then you found a bear that the military, the Polish military, trained to carry ammunition and other heavy items. And kill Nazis. About. So. Yeah, and drink beer. I so I like, guess I guess the name fits. Yeah, it was either that or the Winnie the Pooh belt, and I was like, meh, nah. I'm gonna go with Wojtek. Why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> Your face. Sorry. God dang it, Steve. I was doing so good. I need you to say, I hate this person. I was fighting it, you piece of shit. The customer's always right, right? Bullshit. No, you're not.